Thanks to Wix for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone and welcome to Art and Design. My name is Thorkid and today we're going to be creating a website using Wix.com, specifically this website right here. I'm going to show you how to create this, how to use the interface and how it all works. Let's dive right into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new site. We're going to create a site for a designer. And here we present it with the first two options, which is either to use the ADI editor, which is basically Wix's way of holding your hand while Wix designs the website for you. It basically asks you questions like, uh, what kind of website do you want to create? And um, okay, I want to create an artist website. Okay, then it might ask you questions about uh, what type of colors you like, what type of fonts you like, what kind of like overall theme aesthetic you like, and it it will sort of build the website for you and you sort of don't have to do much design work. And it's really, really nice and easy for people that don't want to get really, really into um, the nitty gritty details of aligning the buttons and uh, placing things in the right positions. But that's what we're going to be talking about in this video because that's uh, the complicated process. Now, if you would like to see a video about the ADI editor, I would love to do that in a future video. So do leave me a comment down below if you want to see that. But let's go ahead and move into the Wix editor. So we choose a template. Now, I am not gonna use any of these templates. And the reason for that is because I already have a design that I am going to create. So I'm gonna base my design on that. So I'm gonna create a completely blank page and create one from scratch. But I'm not saying that you should do the same. If you see a template that really, really like strikes home for you, like, that looks good, that looks really good. Then go ahead and try it out and you can always modify it to what you need. You can change the images, you can move things around. But I'm gonna create a blank page from scratch. Let's just go ahead and click edit. All right, so now Wix is building our website and there we go. Now we are in the Wix editor. And if you're seeing these elements right here, just go ahead and click dev mode and click exit core bit. That'll get rid of the programming tools because we're not going to be looking at the programming tools today, but we are going to be enabling the toolbar. So the toolbar should be enabled by default, but if it isn't, then you can enable it right there. Just going to move that into place like so. And this is where we can manipulate the items that we have selected in the editor and do things like copy, paste, delete, arrange, align items to each other, distribute them flip them and do all sorts of good stuff like that. But we're mostly going to be working with the size and the position, these ones right here. And at the bottom right here, we can see the layers menu. And obviously we don't have anything on the website right now, so there are no layers. So let's get started by adding images to the page. To do that, we go to add image, my uploads, my image uploads, and then we're just going to click on that. And here we can add images from our own computer. Now, we don't need to upload from our own computer. We can use images from Wix or Shutterstock or Unsplash. I'll talk about that later in the video, but right now we're just going to add our own images. I'll click on the images that we want. So now that all of the images are here, um, we can see it's a little bit chaotic. So let's go ahead and organize them real quick and uh, add them into folders. And to do that, we right click, go to create new folder, and then we're just gonna Call this one Artworks. There we go. Now I'm just going to do the same thing for the rest of them. So there we go. We got everything organized into neat little folders. We got the photos, we got the logos, we got the artworks, and the other two images that didn't really fall into any category. Now I'm just going to add the logo and resize it a little bit, and then we're going to move it into the header of the page, and that's this top portion right here. And now if we check out the layers, we can see that the logo is now in the header of the page. Pretty cool. If you move it down into the page, check the layers again, we see it's in the page. So everything's working just the way it should. And now let's just move it back into place. I'm gonna click on the header and move the toolbar just out of the way, just a little bit. And now I'm gonna change the size of the header to 60 pixels and see what happens. You see it got caught on the logo. So we need to just move that a little bit away and then click on the header again, change it to 60 pixels, and there we go. Perfect. Now I want the logo in the header to be 20 pixels away from the left side of the page. Now we can do this by selecting the logo and simply tapping on the arrow keys. 
If we use just the arrow keys, then we move the logo one pixel at a time. But if we hold shift down while we tap on the arrow keys, then we move it 10 pixels at a time. So if we tap twice, we move it 20 pixels. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the color of the background. Now, I'm not gonna change it by much, bear that in mind. I'm just gonna choose a slightly different hue of white. But if we just take a look at the options, we can um, see we can have videos as our background. It's pretty cool if you wanna have like moving videos as the background. We can choose uh, images, of course, upload our own. Uh, choose the ones from the Wix library, a bunch of images right here. Uh, choose uh, from the Unsplash or uh, Shutterstock. It'll cost you a few dollars per image, but I mean, it's really nice that it's integrated directly into the system. But I'm just gonna choose my own color. So I'm gonna choose F8, F8, F8 as the background color. I'm gonna add that to the page like so. I'm gonna select it. And <laughs> as I said, it's not a lot of difference, but I, I like this color, I like this color. So I'm gonna stick with this one. Now let's add something to the main page right now. So we click on add and okay, there are tons of things that we can add to the page. We can of course add text to the page. We can add images, uh, gallery. We can choose vector art. We can use interactive elements, buttons, boxes, buns, buns more. But what I'm gonna be selecting right now is a strip. Now, strips are basically full width pre-designed elements that have things like contact information, uh, like a welcome screen, and like a bunch more. Uh, I'm just gonna select a classic blank strip and place it right here. And the reason why I'm using a blank strip is mainly to split the page into three distinct sections. We'll get to that in just a bit, but I'm gonna move this section up so that it's uh, aligned to the bottom of the header. Then I'm going to change the height to 1080 pixels. and. This is basically going to give us the full page experience. So when the visitor visits this page for the first time, the first thing that they'll see is this section right here. Anything that we put into this strip is arguably the most important part of the website because it should contain the main goal of the website. Now, what do I mean by goal? Well, in short, this is the main reason why a person decided to visit the website. Uh, we want the users to find what they're looking for. So we want them to achieve their goals and be successful on our website. Now, I talked about this and other topics related to how to design a professional website in a previous video. So go ahead and check that out using the card over there or through the link in the description if you want to learn more about website design. But let's get back to the Wix editor and continue with our website and add the front image to the site. Now, this image will serve as the main selling point for the goal that our users want to achieve on the website. Now I made this image using Photoshop and Procreate combined. I'm just going to make it the right size and position it where I want. So I'm just gonna resize it based on what looks right for me. All right, so after faffing about just a little bit, I'm pretty happy with the placement of it and the size. So I'm gonna keep it like this and let's move on and add some text to the section. We do that by going to add and then we're just gonna use text and we can choose any text that we want. I'm just gonna go with heading three going to plop it into place like so. And then I'm going to customize it based on the designs that I have in my mind. I'm just going to go ahead and change the font from Proxima Nova to Futura. Okay, so now let's resize the text box all the way to the edges of the page. So I'm just going to grab this handle, move it all the way to the edge right there. And then I'm going to change the width to 980. And that should be full width of the page. So now let's just make it center aligned like so. And I'm just gonna make some minor changes to it, change the font size to 48. And uh, let's just speed through this process because it's basically just me sort of aligning pixels at this point. So I'm just going to speed through this process. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a button above the main image right over there. So when the user visits the page, this will be the first thing that they'll see. So uh, let's make the button pop just a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to the design and now I'm just gonna change the color uh, of the button itself. Just gonna add this color right here. And now we need to change the color of the text because it's not really contrasting very well with the button color. So let's just choose pure white and let's also change the font to Proxima Nova. So I'm gonna use Proxima Nova for all the buttons and Futura for the rest of the text on the page. 
Now let's just go ahead and close this down and uh, resize the button to 160 pixels in width and 45 pixels in height. So that's perfect. Okay, so this is starting to shape up pretty well. Now I am noticing though that there's some inconsistency in how far apart the items on the page are spaced. So I'm gonna fix that right now and make sure that there's consistency in how far apart the items are from one another. So this one should be 40 pixels away from this. And let's move the image 40 pixels away from the button. All right, so after tinkering around a little bit, I think I'm pretty happy with the position of where this is going. So I'm just gonna zoom out to get a bigger picture. Okay, yeah, I like it. So the only thing that's missing right now is the rest of the page at the bottom and the navigation bar. So let's start by adding a navigation bar just to sort of finish off the main part of the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a menu item. That's what the navigation bar is called. Just gonna plop it into the header like so. And then I'm going to tinker with the design just a little bit to get the font and the colors right. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, so I'll fast forward to this section and we're done. So now we have the navigation bar looking fresh, but it's a little bit lonely up there. There's only one item in the menu, so let's fix that by adding another page to the website, just to get an idea of what it would look like with more pages. So to do that, we go to the menu, click add page, give it a name, and then we basically created a new page on our website. So Wix will automatically navigate us to this page, as we can see. So now we are in the assets page and we're just gonna change the name of home so it's not capitalized letters. So let's go ahead and rename it to home just with normal letters. And I can see that they're quite far apart from one another if we look at the menu right there. Uh, and I will fix that, but before I do, I just want to show you one more thing in this menu right here. So basically if we click on the three dots right there and click on settings, we have access to the settings and the options that are related to this specific page. So we can, for example, change the name of the page, remove the header and the footer. We can have this page password protected or only available to members. You'll have to install a separate module for that, but I just wanted to point out that there's a bunch of more settings and options that are available in that menu right there. Anyways, back to the site. I'm gonna make it so that when this button is clicked, the visitor is taken to our new page. So I'm gonna link this button to our new page. So just gonna call this visit library. So when the user clicks on this button, they'll be sent to the assets page. Now I should probably rename uh, the page to library just to keep it consistent. That's one of the things that we need to keep in mind when designing websites is that we need to keep it consistent in as many ways as we possibly can. And there we go. We have it now linked to the other page and now we can finally resize the navigation menu so that it looks right and I think this is good for now, so let's just keep it like this. And in fact, I think this is a good point to end the video. So in part two in this video, I'm going to be finishing off the website uh, by adding other sections and basically connecting everything together and actually launching artanddesign.tv. So I'm really excited for that. And I wanna thank you all very much for watching this video. If you liked it, click that thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.